Hello, my name is Girish Sharansud, and I'm the director and chief software architect in the ANI line of business in ARM. And I'm also the board of directors in the Autobot Foundation. And I'm co-joined by Shinpei Kato-san, who is the founder and CTO of TFO and the chairman um, um, of the Autobot Foundation. So today we'll be talking about a pretty exciting topic for us. And that is around um, Autobot defined uh, cloud native autonomous drive system development. So let's get started. So um, let's start by looking at a, a major trend that we are seeing in the industry today. Software defined um, is um, a norm in the data centers, as we all know, uh, with software defined compute, software defined networking, software defined storage um, being a pretty mature uh, technology in the data center. But we see the same trend um, happening um, already happening um, and accelerating in the embedded edge domain. And when we um, consider embedded edge, that would be software-defined vehicle, uh, software-defined industrial system, software-defined cameras, software-defined IoT. And we do see that um, in a lot of these, these uh, segments or these trends, we see ARM um, being that one compute platform that is being used across um, all of the segments. But in this talk, what we'll do is we will focus around the software-defined vehicle design paradigm. So when we look at the software-defined vehicles, um, um, one thing that um, the, the, one of the key technologies that is driving software-defined is the adoption of cloud-native. Now, when we say cloud-native, what do we mean? Um, it is typically comprised of uh, uh, developing your applications um, in a containerized um, way um, um, as microservices, um, having a um, complete um, mature CI-CD framework, um, which is built um, uh, in the cloud, and then you deploying it using the orchestration frameworks like Kubernetes and so on and so forth. Now, this has uh, this, this design paradigm we have seen um, uh, matured um, in the data center or in the cloud um, um, segment. But today we see the same design paradigm being applied into the automotive um, or while building the automotive software. Now, in, in this slide, you will see, if, let's go from uh, the, the, the transition that we are seeing from left to the right. Now, on the left, um, 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 as of today, we have we are already um, uh, seeing applications which are in the automotive which are being deployed as a typical service-oriented architecture, wherein an application is being put into a container, a monolithic application is put into a container, being developed in the cloud, deployed onto the edge. But then um, the, the, the one fundamental um, um, design shift that is happening is we go into these, this, this microservice-based automotive stack. Now, this is where um, the, uh, an application, um, a pretty complex application, which, uh, the, um, which is there in the car, is split into multiple microservices, and each of those microservices um, get deployed in a container. And this is where the, the, the true, uh, the, the power of the cloud native really starts coming alive, wherein how do you structure the software? Uh, how do you deploy the software? How do you make the developer efficiency uh, increase um, um, uh, in many folds really start coming into being? Um, but the ultimate nirvana state for automotive um, is, as we all know, is automotive applications are mixed critical. And what I mean by mixed critical is they are real time and functionally safe. Um, so the, the ultimate nirvana state for in a cloud native development environment is for us to being able to develop um, and test and validate and verify the applications that we are developing in the cloud mixed critical applications in the cloud, and then deploy them onto a mixed critical um, SOC or SOCs or in the car in the edge. So let's dive a little bit into detail on how what happens when we, um, how can we view um, uh, cloud native when applied to uh, automotive system development. But before we go into that, is um, um, as we are getting into the cloud native um, uh, uh, world, um, we also see that is also driving the uh, consolidation of the hardware that is there in the car. 
Now, in the left, um, uh, one of the things that this is a traditional architecture that has been in automotive, and you have many fixed function ECUs doing one particular job, and this is what you see in most of today's cars. But uh, where we are moving towards is the domain-based architecture. And this is where we are today, wherein you have, say, two or three very powerful compute units within the car, which are doing a specific domain functionality. Like one of those would be ADAS AD, the other one would be IVI um, and digital cockpit. The third one would be powertrain domain controller. Multiple of these can get fused in one systems. But the trend that we see is, again, as I would put it, the Nirvana state is to get into the zonal architecture. Now, this is where um, you will have one powerful unit. Um, uh, maybe you can call it as a high, um, uh, an in-car high-performance embedded computer, which will be a cluster of uh, compute units. Um, which is very similar um, to what we see um, in, say, in the cloud. And this is why um, um, today we are calling the car as the data center on BL, wherein you are actually a full-fledged data center, which is for embedded nature put inside the car. And this, uh, this embedded computer then talks to the zonal gateways, um, which are terminating the various sensors coming from the car. So the LIDARs, radars, um, all of these will be terminated at the gateway. Um, there will be some pre-processing done, and then the data will be sent out to the HPC for compute. So as we see this consolidation happening because of cloud native or because of software defined, Let's look into uh, what does it mean to apply cloud native to automotive system development. And this is where, this is a, a pretty populated slide, but let me just quickly go through this. So, um, and this is just zooming into what I mentioned earlier on that Nirvana state, where, uh, uh, where an automotive OEM or tier one would like to be. Wherein we start with, say, the bubble one in the cloud, wherein you should be able to um, develop a mixed critical application which can have microservices, which are QM, SLD, SLD um, in the cloud. Um, and then you should also be able to drive simulation data in the cloud so that you can have a complete software in the loop. Um, in the cloud. Um, in addition, you should be able to have different execution environments uh, for different um, uh, system functionalities, um, having different levels of uh, parity. Now, environmental parity, for example, um, for automotive uh, application developers, they might just, depending upon what application um, um, uh, they, the developer is writing, you can just focus on the ISA parity. Uh, he, he's just interested in the ISA parity. So in that case, if we have ARM on ARM, that is ISA parity. In certain cases, we need the SOC parity, where then even the devices that uh, will be there in the edge system, they need to be emulated into a virtual environment in the cloud. And this is where we, we have the SOC parity. And then comes the, 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 the digital twin, where then you need to have the complete system parity, um, which will be there in the car, but we need to simulate, we need to create a virtual environment of it in the, um, in the cloud. So, so, um, so the intent is for us to have a complete software in the loop uh, infrastructure, uh, which can be enabled in the car, uh, in the in the cloud, um, and then once you have done, once you have verified, validated, developed um, your 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 software, uh, automotive software in the cloud, the intent is for you to be able to push it out down into the fourth bubble, which is the what we would call it as the hardware in the loop. Um, now, this is where you have the actual ECU, the physical ECU that is going to go into the car, which can be validated. With the same software, with the identical software that you have developed in the cloud, you push it down into the Hill cluster and you validate it. And once that is done, then this, is, so this software then really goes into your car. But the journey doesn't end over there. Because um, after the software is delivered in the car, the car is purchased. Um, and as you would have seen, um, um, there are a number of news articles going in about OTA, about new services getting applied to the car, to the functionality after the car is deployed like a mobile phone. So um, the intent is to use the same infrastructure to de deliver these new services, new applications in the car. So consider a car as a mobile phone. So. As we look into this, um, um, although this Nirvana state is great, but goes without saying there are multiple challenges in this for us to achieve this state. So let's focus on what to discover some of those challenges that we need to solve. 
Now, um, let's 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 look at uh, these um, in a um, um, in a in a brief way. The first one is on the software portability. Now, it would have been evident, um, and anybody who has been in cloud native world, um, the whole uh, the, the 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 key essence of cloud native is being and to enable cloud native is to decouple hardware from the software. So software portability is a key component that we need to um, achieve um, in uh, in automotive. This becomes difficult because of the heterogeneous compute that is um, um, and diverse compute that is available in the uh, in a car. Um, cloud native mixed criticality. Um, now this is where um, today's cloud native infrastructure was built for cloud. Uh, or enterprise applications, um, which is not aware for mixed criticality. It's not aware of real-time functional safe uh, workload and how to deploy them. So we need to extend that. The third uh, critical important component is how can you seamlessly um, um, do uh, the ML and the DevOps um, with the right level of uh, execution or environmental parity, which we uh, discussed in the earlier slides. Um, so. All of these three, I mean, they, they, these three are some of the fundamental, um, pretty complex problems that we need to uh, we need to solve, and these are just a few that 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 we have listed over here. So um, that takes us to the point that these problems, these challenges that we are talking about, this is not one company can solve this. Um, these these are pretty uh, uh, um, uh, quite quite um, a ch uh, quite heavy challenges that needs an ecosystem. Um, so we need an ecosystem of developers, the automotive um, OEMs, tier one, the entire ecosystem to come together to solve these problems um, um, collaboratively and create an ecosystem across the value chain um, to provide a cloud native infrastructure. So to um, address some of the uh, complexities um, or challenges that we spoke about earlier, ARM has um, started these um, two initiatives um, quite recently that were announced, uh, one being um, SOFI. Now, what SOFI stands for is Scalable Open Architecture for Embedded Edge. Um, so it's an initiative wherein we are trying to drive the adoption of cloud native in automotive space by creating uh, a, a reference architecture um, to, um, along with um, a reference implementation of how you could use um, 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 the, the existing infrastructure of cloud native and uh, deploy it for the, uh, for the, um, in, into the automotive space. Um, in addition, uh, as part of SOFI, as we discussed, um, there is, um, um, for, to solve some of these challenges that we have spoken about, it needs an ecosystem. So we have something, um, uh, we have a SIG, that is the special interest group. Um, and the SIG comprises of um, leaders from uh, across the automotive value chain, um, from the OEMs to the tier ones, to the CSPs, all the way down to the OSVs, ISVs, um, software service providers, so on and so forth. And the intent is for these um, the, the ecosystem players to come together to create this architecture, to create this reference architecture, um, and then uh, seed it into the ecosystem and um, bootstrap its adoption. But in addition to SOFI, what we have done is uh, we needed a platform which is high in compute so that we can create a reference platform for um, uh, to accelerate the, um, the adoption of ARM as a de facto um, architecture for centralized compute in the zonal architecture that we discussed earlier. And this is where we working with our um, ecosystem partner, ADLink, we have created two um, two uh, platforms one is uh, on the left hand side that you can see um, um, which is a development platform uh, having 32 uh, ampere ultra cores um, and it is quite suitable and ideal for lab based development so it will come in a, ser a server um, uh, kind of a desktop chassis um, and it can be used for developing sophie based applications on it but what we have also done is um, we have also uh, in the process of uh, creating uh, a ruggedized version of this platform, which is high in higher core count. Uh, but now it is uh, it is a platform, still a development version, but something that you can put inside the car. So when you have developed your application um, in, in the lab, you can then put that application 
in this ruggedized enclosure um, or this uh, this particular variant of the development system and um, put it in the back of the trunk so that you can get some live data and live validation um, um, on it. So, um, so with these initiatives that ARM is driving, the, the next thing that we needed to do is to seed the ecosystem with these um, with, 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 with Sophie and with these dev platforms to accelerate the cloud native uh, adoption. So towards that, we started, we have started working quite closely uh, with the AutoWare Foundation who creates uh, uh, AutoWare, which is an open source autonomous stack. And um, uh, the intent is to use uh, AutoWare as the harbinger to seed uh, Sophie-based cloud native architecture in autonomy space. Um, so, towards, um, so to talk more about this, uh, let me hand over to Shinpei Kato-san, who is the creator of AutoWare um, and chairman of AutoWare Foundation, to provide more details of a new initiative that um, we as ARM and AutoWare Foundation have kick-started um, to the bootstrap um, cloud native development. Thanks, Girish. Um, and hi, everyone. My name is Shinpei Kato. I'm the founder and CTO of Tier 4, and I'm um, also chairman uh, of the Order Foundation. Um, so I'm happy to introduce an open etiquette, which is de designed to uh, democratize cloud native in autonomy. So first, what is AutoWare? Um, AutoWare is started in uh, 2015 uh, by myself. Um, now uh, is widely used by uh, more than uh, 100 companies and it runs on more than uh, 30 types of vehicles uh, in many countries. Uh, now it is even used by uh, OEMs for commercial usage, uh, in particular for mobility service uh, development. The objective uh, of Open Etiquette uh, is to deliver um, Autonomous driving stack as a static kit, quick static kit, uh, comprising hardware, so system software, uh, including middleware, and the new version of AutoWare, which is called AutoWare.auto, .auto, uh, is an, uh, you know, designed for uh, auto grade uh, requirement. Uh, it also supports uh, cloud uh, connectivity to bootstrap um, cloud uh, native automotive uh, development. We also want to deliver uh, complete cloud native development uh, of the environment uh, for, for autoware.auto uh, so that we can uh, uh, in turn deliver a microservice based architecture uh, for AutoWare to enable cloud native uh, DevOps uh, and uh, most importantly, cloud to edge uh, service orchestration. Then we want to uh, provide. Um, a platform for AutoWare Foundation member product integration uh, to seed you know, this uh, commercial uh, ecosystem for many uh, OEM tier one companies. Then uh, we can uh, deliver clear documentation and quick start guides so that everybody can easily access uh, our solution. So open educate as an ecosystem, more specifically, uh, Open Etiquette is a reference box using uh, Sophie and ARM developer platform where uh, AutoWare uh, is running uh, with a cloud solution provider enabled pipeline um, as a package so that uh, T1 OEM or AD companies uh, as well as uh, or many other uh, teams, including universities, can easily get access to functions of Open Etiquette. Let's uh, take a uh, look at it uh, more closely. Uh, so inside uh, the stack of Open Etiquette, uh, for example, you can see that um, the DevOps pipeline uh, using a virtual EC environment and uh, simulation uh, tools and so on uh, are already supported in the cloud uh, so that all you have to do is to access uh, the cloud instance then um, everything um, including you know uh, the pipeline and the tools 
required for the development of uh, autonomous vehicle based on hardware uh, is already there. And inside the container, um, you, you can see that um, the same uh, DevOps uh, environment is integrated on top of autoware uh, platform. It supports uh, multiple uh, architectures and um, random operating systems uh, environment. And thanks to AWS, um, all you have to do is to just get access AWS infrastructure. So you can see that a uh, already um, a prepared the image. Uh, you can easily copy it into your project and it already supports multiple uh, architectures. Uh, so everything is uh, integrated uh, through uh, uh, the site of Auto Foundation. So uh, you can get easily uh, easily get access um, to open ADK. Um, so we uh, Auto Foundation now um, planning to uh, uh, start a working group. So we already have uh, many uh, working groups. Uh, but thanks to ARM uh, initiative, uh, we are planning to start a new working group, uh, which is called Open Educate. So now I switch back to uh, Girish so that he can introduce uh, briefly uh, what is Open Educate working group and expectation. Then uh, I think you can conclude this presentation. Thanks, Shinpei. So um, as Shinpei mentioned, um, in the AutoWare Foundation, we are um, looking at, we have already actually started the uh, Open AD Kit work group. And Open AD Kit work group is pulling together all the work that is being done across all of these various work groups that are running in the AutoWare Foundation, starting from the software work group, the hardware work group, the simulation work group putting it all together and then developing uh, and then um, um, creating an end-to-end vertical stack of it. But then adding on top or overlaying on top of it the, the cloud-native DevOps methodologies. Um, now, um, one of the key things of um, OpenAD Kit work group is also to drive architecture changes uh, into AutoWare so that we can um, uh, move AutoWare uh, into a more containerized architecture, a microservice-based architecture, which is a fundamental change that needs to happen into AutoWare. But this is a journey. Um, and we intend to take um, this journey in a bite-sized way. So, um, so as part of the Open AD Kit uh, initiative, uh, which will be defined as part of the Open AD Kit work group, um, you will see that um, um, in, in, in hopefully in in few days we should be um, uh, releasing maybe the first version of the Open Educate 1.0, which will allow a developer to just get kick-started on being able to develop AutoWare in the cloud uh, in, a, in, a, in a limited containerized environment and then deploy it onto hardware platforms like Kraken. So uh, a lot, uh, all of this work will be happening in and around the Open Educate work group um, in AutoWare Foundation. So now that takes me to the, uh, to the, to the last slide. So as we have seen in this presentation, that software-defined, um, yeah, it is a trend. Um, well, we would say it's no more a trend. It is imminent. It is already happening. We are already seeing it. Um, um, so uh, it's only how can we accelerate it. But also, we also see a momentum towards the, the drive towards adoption of centralized compute uh, in, the, uh, in the need of ado uh, in the adoption of the cloud-native design paradigm. Um, as we discussed, um, ARM uh, launches um, SOFI um, initiative to uh, really accelerate cloud native development with mixed critical um, feature sets and also announced uh, development systems um, which are um, high performance, scalable, open compute platforms um, that can really kickstart um, for um, a, a drive to use ARM uh, as the uh, AK data center on wheels for the next generation software defined vehicles. Now, using Sophie uh, and these reference platforms that we are creating, 
um, um, the intent is for us to work with, um, as Shinpei just mentioned, to work with uh, um, uh, foundations like Ottawa Foundation, wherein we want to democratize. We need to make, we, uh, and make cloud native and accessible um, design paradigm to developers in automotive. And to accelerate that, uh, we are creating on a, um, the what we are calling it as the open AD kit under the banner of Ottawa Foundation, so that we can provide that end-to-end cloud native development environment to bootstrap the the the, um, the, the cloud native uh, trend. So, uh, last but certainly not the least, uh, we are just at the beginning of a journey, right? and this is where uh, we have just launched. Sophie, we will. We spoke about Open AD Kit today. We'll be launching it, um, and we'll be making it available um, um, in in a few weeks' time. All of these are open initiatives, and we need, as I mentioned earlier on, we need an ecosystem to work with us to make this thing happen. Um, it's quite a unique opportunity for us to come together to solve a pretty fundamental but very exciting problem that is happening in the automotive space. So please get involved, um, get in touch with me or Shinpei, and we'll be more than happy to take you through this journey. Um, so thank you. Um, thanks for listening to us um, and hope to um, hear from you guys soon. There is a live Q&A session starting now to continue the conversation. To take part, join us on Zoom by clicking the yellow button just below the video player on this session's page.